Okay. Uh, can everyone hear me? Good. Okay. So uh, my name is Michael Vollmer. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Locale, a language for programs operating on serialized data. This is work that I did with my friends at Indiana University and Purdue University. So in one sentence, Locale, or location calculus, is a language for efficiently and safely operating on serialized data. So to, to describe this, I'm going to go through these bold words one by one. First, serialized data. What am I talking about? So normally in, in a programming language, you typically will represent a tree-like structure with something that looks roughly like this, where the different objects are separate you know, objects in memory. Uh, there'll be some sort of tag at the beginning for a node, and then you know, the, the subtrees will be represented by a pointer that points to that subtree. Uh, so you could, uh, with some sort of like pseudo C code, you represent the type like that. Or in another high level language, it would look roughly like this. But this isn't the only way you could represent this data. Uh, for example, a pointer free pre order serialization of that same data could look something like this. Here, where the N and the L are tags that represent whether something is a node or a leaf, and the ints are just written right in line. And these are just bytes. So you might write something like this if you're going to, for example, serialize this data and write it to disk or send it over a network. And if you wanted to work on it, you would have to read it back in, you know, deserialize it, and write back out that uh, pointer-based tree to work with your, uh, your language's normal functions for handling recursive data. So let's say we had this tree, and what we wanted to do was map over the tree and increment all the leaves by one. So add one takes that tree and returns this new tree where it's two, three instead of one, two. So the way that a normal programmer might do this would be parse that tree, apply this function to it, and then reserialize it to get the end result. An alternative would be, what if we had, instead of that f, we had some f prime that just worked directly on those bytes, that received those bytes as input and new bytes as output. The Gibbon compiler, which I'm going to be talking about today, is a compiler that takes f to f prime. And more generally, imagine instead of just that f, we had, let's say, f compose g, or some arbitrary program. Right? It might uh, return a different data type than it accepts. It might do some internal allocation. Lots of things. Gibbon is, more generally, a whole program compiler that will transform a program that operates on data uh, on, on recursive data into a program that operates on serialized data. And the design of the Gibbon compiler looks roughly like this. We start with high-level functional code. We translate that into locale, which is going to be the subject of this talk, which is a type-safe intermediate language for representing these operations on serialized data. And then from there, we generate low-level C code. So uh, what does it mean when I say we operate efficiently on serialized data. Well, what I mean is essentially our performance matches or exceeds prior work in this area, which I'll briefly go over. We have a, a more thorough evaluation in the paper. And th there are two points I want to make about our uh, efficiency. That we save time because we don't have to deserialize and serialize like I just mentioned. But there's also general performance increases that we can get just by working on the packed data instead of having to follow all the pointers. So uh, for the purpose of this talk, I'll be comparing against Cap and Proto, which is a library for doing the same kind of thing, for working on, on bytes, and Haskell Compact Normal Form, which is built into the Glasgow Haskell compiler, which is a way of uh, unifying the in-memory and on-disk representation of data, and well, as well against, as against idiomatic C. So here's a plot comparing various benchmarks uh, in these two systems, Cap and Proto and, and Haskell CNF. Uh, where the black line at the bottom there is Gibbon at one. So these numbers are how many times slower these different systems are than Gibbon. So higher is good for us. Uh, and it, the, this, is, this is not necessarily always an apples to apples comparison because these different systems have slightly different purposes and limitations and, and so on. But this is just to demonstrate that in general in these benchmarks, we are often multiple times faster than the existing work. And even if we don't care about working with serialized data. We just want fast tree traversals, tree transforms. Here, uh, this is comparing against doing the same thing in like idiomatic normal C, where you're just working on structs that you've malloced and following pointers and everything. And here, there are many benchmarks that are 10 times more, or faster or more. And these are situations essentially where you're, 
doing a big map or a fold over some big tree-like structure in memory. So this, this uh, approach that I'm going to talk about in this talk is also applicable just to improving the performance of uh, recursive tree transformations. So finally, uh, getting to the main point here is an argument about safety. So up until this point, you can imagine just, you know, well, why can't I just write C code that just does this? Why do I need a language for this? All right, so this is uh, some C code that does the add one uh, example I had earlier. Uh, it works directly on these byte buffers, uh, does a lot of tricky pointer manipulation, casting. This kind of code, it's like, even this short function is already pretty hard to read and write, but you can imagine something bigger than this that would be very difficult to deal with. In particular, I want you to look at the, uh, the line at the t near the top there that says skip past tag, the in plus plus, out plus plus. This is incrementing in both of those buffers. Now, what if you're having a bad day and you just forgot to write that line? Well, you're not going to get a compile error. But you're, what you're going to do is you're going to run it and you're going to get something in those red question marks. I didn't work out what it was, but it's not going to be good. So locale is a type safe language. It, and it's a, it has high level features like algebraic data types and pattern matching, but it allows us to express these low level computations like we just saw in that C code. And the way that we do this is similar to the uh, strategy used by region type systems. All right, so we annotate our types with, with what we call symbolic locations, which are kind of like a limited form of pointer, right, where you, the things you're allowed to do on it are very restricted. We also annotate uh, data constructors with these same location arguments. So this is essentially saying, when I'm constructing this cons, construct it at location look. And the big guarantee that we get out of this from our, our type safety argument is, let's say we have some, argu or some variable x. And x is a list at look, according to its type. Then this means that if we go look in memory at look, there is a valid list there. And this is a little bit of a deep property, right? Because this means if we look in memory at the, uh, represent, or the, the spot represented by this symbolic location loc, there is some serialized bytes. And those serialized bytes accurately match the logical specification that is required by the type list. And this is true for any algebraic data type uh, you, you might want to define. So this, this argument is the sort of thing that prevents us from having the problem we had in the C code earlier, where you're just incorrectly reading or writing bytes, or you're, you've messed up somehow, and you're, you're just not maintaining your program invariant. This uh, guarantees us that all of the data we're working with in memory, even though it's just raw bytes, is actually behaving the way that we expect it to behave. So the overall picture of a locale program consists of regions and locations. And each region is one serialized data structure. So it's a little bit different than how you might have seen regions presented before. So here at the top, R1 is a region that contains one binary tree, which is a node and two leaves. And locations are these individual positions inside regions. So in the, the bottom picture here, C is the location of the root of this tree. A is the location of the left subtree and B is the location of the right subtree. So we have a let region form, and we also have a let loc form that we introduced in this paper. And let loc introduces symbolic locations with a, cert, a, a limited set of expressions for where the location might be. And locations in our language are only allowed to be written to once. So you can't overwrite a location once you've already written to it. So there are a, a handful of ways that we relate locations to each other and to regions. So in the picture from earlier, C is the start of R1. It's the beginning of the region. A is equal to C plus 1. It is one, one past C. And B is equal to after A. So locations can either be the start of a region, or they can be related by after or plus 1 to another region. And the ways that you're allowed to use these are limited. The type system ensures that you can only use these relations in a way that will end up matching the type that you're going to write. So these are, these are a little bit like pointers. You can think of this like pointer arithmetic, but the type system is very careful about how you're allowed to do arithmetic to these locations. So to make that a little bit more concrete, let's walk through an example of building a simple binary tree. So let's say we just uh, bound a region R, 
and we want our first location c to to be be the beginning of that region. Then the next thing we have to do is we have to bind the location after that. And I'll get to why in a second. From here, we can write our first data. We can say, well, I want a leaf that contains the int 1. And that will write that to the location A in that region. Then I need to allocate the region, the location rather, after that leaf, which gives us location B. Then I want to write my right subtree to location B. So now I have both the left and the right leafs written, L1, L2. Now, finally, we're able to construct the node, which writes the tag N to C. And now at this point, we have a complete binary tree. So if we go back to our invariants, what is the thing that we needed to be true at every step? So each of these three lines is a line that's writing to memory. And after each one, we can check our invariant. So the top line, let x equal leaf a1, is it true that if we look at location a, there is a leaf? And yes, that's true. So saying that x has type tree at a, we have maintained our invariant. Similarly, with the second example, it is true that there is a tree at B. And then finally, in the last line, the Z equals node CXY, there is a complete binary tree at C. So you can maybe start to see why it was actually necessary that we write the N last. Because if we wrote the N first, it would not be a valid binary tree. And what this means is we never end up in a situation like this. We're never going to have a type that tells us there is something at C, like there is a tree here at C, but we only wrote the left subtree and not the right one, for example. Now, there's a, an, a little bit of an unfortunate consequence here, which is it would be nice from a performance perspective to write these strictly in order and not have to go back and write the tag at the end. And as an optimization, once we've, we're done validating and type checking everything, our compiler can just go ahead and move that right so we actually do everything in order. But it's important to be safe. So we want to make sure that we prevent something like this. So now we can finally get to our first locale program, which is our old friend add one. And here we can look at the return type. We need to return a tree at B. So how do we build this function to return a tree at B? Well, we pattern match on the input tree. And if it's a leaf, we return a new leaf at B. So there we are returning a valid tree at B. If it's a node, we construct a new node and return that node at B. So, so far, so good. But how do we build this node? Well, this looks pretty close to that uh, example I walked through step by step. Right? First, we jump over the spot for the node tag. Then we write the left subtree. Then we uh, calculate the spot after that. And then we write the right subtree. The difference here is instead of those data constructors, these are recursive calls. So the left and right subtree are going to be arbitrarily large, but all the logic is still the same. So uh, I hope I've made uh, an argument that this language is safe. Uh, we have the full formalization and type safety proof in the paper if you want to look at that. Uh, but before I finish, there are a couple of points about expressivity of this language that are interesting and I want to make. So first of all, all this talk so far has been removing pointers, no more pointers anymore. But actually, you can reintroduce pointers into the language fairly easily. And there are some reasons why you might want to. In this top example here, we're inserting three into this list, a list that contains one, two. So we end up with a list, or a list that contains two, one. So we end up with a list three, two, one. Now, I wrote this, the, the little arrows there that say deep copy. Well, if we want everything to be serialized and we want no pointers, then the proper way to compile this is to do a full traversal and copy of the original list. So now instead of being O1, this is ON. And this is actually fine. It, it, this might be what you want to do. But it might not be what you want to do. And if it's not what you want to do, for example, if this is some you know, thing you're using internally or a temporary data structure or something, you actually do want this insertion into a list to be O1. So how do we add pointers back into our language? Well, you see at the bottom here this uh, Haskell-like like data type definition of list. A list is either a cons or a nil. Well, it could be a third thing now. We can add an I here which is a new data constructor that's just an ordinary data constructor that's followed by a pointer. And the pointer is tagged with a type. So if we, follow, if we follow that pointer, we'll get a list. And that's all we need to build the bottom example. We're inserting three into this list, 
gives us a cons of three and a, a pointer, which points to the old list. And this allows us to recover a shared structure. This also has some other interesting uh, implications. For example, uh, you, can, you can write a program that's totally pointer-based or totally serialized or some combination of the two. And you can write functions that are generic over whether their input is serialized or not, or how serialized it is. Now, last thing to talk about is I was a little bit hand-wavy earlier when I gave the, uh, the code example of add one uh, because it happened to work out. But there's a, there's a complication here, which if you've worked on serialized data, you might uh, recognize, which is if you have a field that's arbitrarily large, you don't necessarily know where it ends. So here, here's a, a very simple function called rightmost that returns the rightmost leaf in a binary tree. And of course, the way you would want this to work is just pattern match on the node and immediately recur on the right subtree. But of course, it doesn't recur on x. And that might be a problem. So x is, is we don't know how big it is, not necessarily. <laughs> so we need a way to jump over it to get to the beginning of y. So one thing we could do is we could change the data type of tree to store an offset uh, before the x and use that to calculate the location of y. Or we could just traverse x essentially have a, a dummy traversal that recurs through all the, the nodes and throws that away. But there's something going on here, right? In comparison, another function here like sum, this one recurs on both the x and the y. So there's no reason to worry about this because during the course of evaluation of sum, we're going to walk through all of x and all of y. So what's the difference between these two functions? Now we, uh, in our, our formalization, we abstract over this with a, a mechanism that we call an end witness. An end witness is, like I say here, an abstraction of where things end. So there are multiple ways to compute the end witness of a location. One way is if you recur on it, which you might do in the ordinary evaluation of a function. Another way would be having the data type store the size information for that node. So we're, uh, in, our, in our system, we are also generic over how we get to the end of, of things, how we find these end witnesses. OK, so uh, I hope I've made the argument that locale is, in fact, a language for efficiently and safely operating on serialized data. Uh, the full type safety proof is in our extended paper. Uh, a, a, the formalization and uh, sort of summary of it is in the PLDI paper. The compiler itself is available on GitHub. It's open source. And uh, you can install it and run it if you want. Uh, we also have an artifact that was submitted with this paper. Uh, so thank you very much. Right. So uh, we have time for a few questions uh, as the next speaker comes up. So uh, if you have any questions. So, uh,